The rusted lock gave way with a sharp tug, the heavy iron door creaking open to reveal a dimly lit space within the decrepit shed. As my eyes adjusted, a faint whimper reached my ears, the unmistakable sound of a child's muffled cries. Hello? I called out, my voice trembling. Is someone there? Silence. Stealing my nerves, I stepped inside, the musty air assaulting my senses. Rays of sunlight streamed through cracks in the walls, illuminating a small lap huddled figure in the corner. I gasped, covering my mouth to stifle the cry that threatened to escape. It was a young girl, her frail body curled into a tight ball, stringy blonde hair obscuring her face. At the sound of my footsteps, she froze, her cries turning to ragged breaths. "'It's okay. I won't hurt you,' I said, my words gentle yet firm. "'My name is Evelyn. I'm here to help.' Slowly, she lifted her head, and our eyes met. Piercing blue orbs, haunted yet defiant, stared back at me, the gaze of one far older than her years. A surge of recognition washed over me, coupled with disbelief and horror. "'Eliza?' I whispered, the name I never thought I'd utter again. "'Eliza Carson?' Her brow furrowed, confusion flickering across her delicate features. Of course, she wouldn't recognize me. We'd never met. Eliza Carson was Clayton's cousin, presumed dead after a boating accident six years ago when she was only six years old. Her body was never recovered, but the entire community mourned her loss. How do you know my name? Her small voice quivered, laced with equal parts fear and desperation. Eliza, it's me, Evelyn. I'm married to your cousin Clayton. I inched closer, my hands raised in a placating gesture. You're safe now, I promise. I'll get you out of here. Her eyes widened, realization dawning. You have to go, she pleaded, shrinking back. If he finds out, you know. The shed's entrance slammed open, the force sending a tremor through the floorboards. I whirled around to find Clayton, his expression a mix of shock and trepidation. Evelyn? His gaze flickered between us, confusion rapidly giving way to panic. What are you doing here? Get away from her! I stood my ground, shielding Eliza with my body. Clayton, what is going on? Why is your cousin, who everyone thought was dead, locked up in this shed? His Adam's apple bobbed as he swallowed hard. You don't understand. It's not what it looks like. Then explain it to me, I demanded, my voice rising. Because right now it looks like your family has been lying and keeping a little girl prisoner for God knows how long. Eliza flinched at my outburst, and I softened my tone. Please, Clayton, she's just a child. Whatever this is about, we need to get her out of here and to safety. Clayton's shoulders slumped, defeated. He opened his mouth to speak, but the words died on his lips as a booming voice echoed from outside. What in the blazes is going on here? My blood turned to ice as Terence Carson, Clayton's uncle, and the family patriarch appeared in the doorway his imposing figure casting a long shadow over us all. Terence's eyes narrowed as they settled on Eliza's frail form cowering behind me. A cruel sneer twisted his weathered features. Well, well, seems the little brat has been discovered. He spat the words like venom. Didn't think you'd last this long, girl. I tensed, shielding Eliza further from his menacing glare. What is the meaning of this, Terence? Why have you been keeping a child locked up like some animal? He scoffed, unfazed by my accusation. That's none of your concern, Missy. You've stuck your nose where it don't belong. Like hell it's not my concern, I shot back, fury rising within me. This is my family, too, and I have a right to know what kind of depravity you've been up to. Terence advanced, his bulky frame towering over me. You watch your tone, girl. This is my land, my family. What I do here is my business. Clayton stepped between us, his arms extended. Uncle Terence, please. There's no need for this. Let's just take a breath and— And what, boy? Terence snarled, rounding on his nephew. You gonna take her side over your own blood, after everything I've done for this family? I— Clayton faltered, his eyes flitting between us, torn. Seizing the opportunity, I pressed on. Clayton, look at me. You know this is wrong. Whatever your uncle's reasons, keeping a child prisoner is unforgivable. We have to get Eliza out of here and to the authorities. Terence barked a harsh laugh. The authorities? You think that sheriff buddy of yours will lift a finger against me? I own half this goddamn town, girl. No one's gonna believe the ramblings of some outsider over the word of a Carson. His words chilled me to the bone, but I refused to back down. We'll see about that. I'm not afraid of you, Terence. Not anymore. With a surprising burst of strength, I grabbed Eliza's hand and pulled her towards the exit. 
Terence made a move to stop us, but Clayton held him back, his expression pained but resolute. As we burst out into the open air, I heard Terence's roar of fury echoing behind us. This ain't over, you hear me? You're gonna regret this, Evelyn Carson. I'll make sure of it. We ran, putting as much distance between us in that wretched place as possible. Eliza's small hand trembled in mine, but she didn't slow, her resilience evident despite her ordeal. Finally, we reached the safety of town, and I ushered her into the back of my truck, out of sight. Her wide, haunted eyes met mine, brimming with a mixture of fear and hope. "'What—what what happens now?' she whispered, her voice small, but laced with steel. I cupped her face gently, determination blazing within me. "'Now we fight back. We're going to expose what Terence has done, and make sure he can never hurt anyone again.' A faint smile tugged at her cracked lips, and she nodded the first spark of life I'd seen in her since our fateful encounter. As I gunned the engine, peeling out of the sleepy town that harbored such horrors, I knew there was no turning back. Terence had made it personal, and I would stop at nothing to bring him to justice, both for Eliza's sake and my own. The game was afoot, and I would see this through to the bitter end, no matter what stood in my way. Terence's reign of terror was about to come crashing down, and God help anyone who tried to stop me. My truck rumbled to a stop outside the sheriff's station, the engine still growling angrily as I killed the ignition. Eliza peered out the window, her small frame tense with apprehension. It's okay, I said, giving her hand a reassuring squeeze. Marcus is a good man. He'll help us. She nodded mutely, chewing her lip as we exited the vehicle. The station's double doors swung open, and Marcus himself strode out, a concerned crease etched into his brow. Evelyn, what's going on? His gaze landed on Eliza, and his eyes widened. Is that— It's a long story, I replied grimly. We need to talk, in private. Understanding flashed across his features as he ushered us inside, his demeanor all business. Once sequestered in his office, I wasted no time recounting the harrowing events of the day, from discovering Eliza's confinement to Terence's menacing threats. Marcus listened intently, his expression darkening with every detail. When I finished, he let out a low whistle, scrubbing a hand over his weathered face. "'Son of a bitch,' he muttered. "'I knew Terence Carson was a piece of work, but this—' He shook his head, disgust etched into his features. "'You believe me, then?' I pressed. "'You'll help us bring him down?' "'Of course I believe you, Evelyn.' He reached across his desk, clasping my hand firmly. "'You know I've always had your back. I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that bastard gets what's coming to him.' Relief washed over me at his words, but it was short-lived as another thought occurred to me. What about Eliza's safety? Terence won't stop until he gets her back under his control. Marcus's jaw tightened. Leave that to me. I'll set you both up somewhere secure, out of town where he can't get to you. No. The vehement protest came not from me, but from Eliza herself. We both turned to her, startled by the sudden outburst from the normally timid girl. I'm not running any more, she declared, her eyes blazing with a fire I hadn't yet seen. That monster has kept me locked up, afraid of my own shadow for too long. I want to face him, to make him pay for what he's done. My admiration for her bravery was tempered by concern. Eliza, I understand how you feel, but— But nothing, she cut me off fiercely. I may be just a kid, but I'm stronger than he thinks. You said we were going to fight back, and that's what I want to do. I opened my mouth to protest further, but Marcus held up a hand, silencing me. She's right, Evelyn. His expression was grim, but resolute. If we want to take Terence down for good, we'll need Eliza's testimony. She's the key to exposing his crimes and making sure he can't wriggle his way out of this. Eliza lifted her chin defiantly, her jaw set in determination far beyond her years. In that moment, I saw not a frightened child, but a young woman forged in the fires of unimaginable hardship a kindred spirit with an inner strength to match my own. With a slow nod of acceptance, I turned back to Marcus. All right, what's our next move? A faint smile tugged at the corner of his mouth. First, we need to gather more evidence against Terence, something concrete to back up Eliza's story. And for that, he paused, his gaze flickering towards the door. We'll need to bring in some extra firepower. As if on cue, there was a sharp rap at the office door, Marcus's smile widened as he called out, "'Come on in, Nina. We've got work to do.' 
Nina Carson swept into the room like a whirlwind, her sharp features pinched with an expression somewhere between apprehension and distaste. Her piercing gaze settled on me, then Eliza, before flicking back to Marcus. "'You weren't kidding,' she muttered. "'The kid's alive.' I bristled at her dismissive tone, but Marcus held up a placating hand. "'Nina, you know why I called you here. We need your help taking down your father once and for all.' A flicker of emotion passed over her face, a mixture of anger and hurt so fleeting I almost missed it. With a curt nod, she seemed to steel herself, smoothing her features into an impassive mask. Fine. What do you need from me? As Marcus laid out the situation, Nina listened stonily, her jaw clenched tight. When he finished, she let out a harsh bark of laughter, shaking her head in disbelief. Typical dad, she spat, lying, manipulating, doing whatever it takes to maintain his twisted idea of control. Her gaze landed on Eliza, softening ever so slightly. I'm sorry, kid. You didn't deserve to get caught up in his sick games. Eliza met her stare evenly, her small frame radiating a strength that belied her years. It's not your fault, she replied, her voice steady. You're not the one who kept me locked up like an animal for six years. An uncomfortable silence hung in the air, thick with unspoken tensions and histories I could only guess at. Finally, Nina broke it with a weary sigh. You're right. This is on him, not me. Not anymore. Her jaw set in grim determination. I'll help however I can to take the bastard down. No more lies, no more protecting him. It's time he paid for his crimes. That's what I like to hear. Marcus clapped his hands together, all business once more. First things first, we need to gather evidence, anything that can corroborate Eliza's story and prove Terence was behind her. Disappearance. I might be able to help with that, Nina offered, her voice taking on a harder edge. Dad may be good at covering his tracks, but he's also arrogant as hell. Chances are he's left a trail, however faint, if we know where to look. A thin smile tugged at the corner of my mouth. Then it's a good thing we've got an insider on our side. Nina's lips curved into a matching expression, tinged with a bitterness that spoke volumes. Believe me, I know all about the Carson family's dirty little secrets. Let's just say dear old dad wasn't exactly father of the year material. As she delved into the sordid details, my anger towards Terence Carson only intensified, both for Eliza's horrific mistreatment and the web of manipulation he'd spun around his own flesh and blood. This man's villainy knew no bounds, tainting everything and everyone he touched like a malignant blight. But not for much longer. With Marcus's tenacity, Eliza's bravery, and Nina's inside knowledge— we would unravel Terence's schemes thread by thread until he had nowhere left to hide. Come hell or high water, he would face justice, both for his sake and mine. When Nina finished her grim recounting, I turned to Marcus, my expression hardening with resolve. Where do we start? The sheriff leaned back in his chair, a feral glint in his eye. At the beginning, we're going to dig into every inch of Terence's life, turn over every rock until we find the proof to bury that son of a bitch for good— he paused, letting the weight of his words sink in before continuing grimly. Whatever it takes. The Carson family estate loomed ahead, its wrought iron gates an imposing barrier guarding the secrets that lurked within. Nina gripped the steering wheel tightly as we approached, her knuckles white with tension. You sure about this, Evelyn? she asked, her voice tight. There's no going back after we cross that line. I eyed the foreboding manner feeling its dark presence like a weight pressing down on me. I'm sure. It's time we got some answers, straight from the devil's mouth. Nina gave a grim nod before punching in the code, the gates grinding open with a piercing shriek of metal on metal. We pulled through, the tires crunching over the gravel drive as we neared the main house. Lorraine Carson was waiting on the porch, her arms crossed defensively over her chest. As we climbed out of the car, her pinched expression softened briefly at the sight of her daughter— Nina? What are you doing here? Her gaze landed on me, eyes narrowing to slits. And you brought her? After everything that's happened? That's exactly why we're here, Mother, Nina replied coolly. We know what Dad's been up to, about Eliza. It's over. Lorraine flinched as if struck, panic flitting across her features before being hastily masked by a stony facade. I don't know what you're talking about. Can it, Mom? Nina snapped, her patience clearly waning. The lying, the cover-ups, it all stops now. 
we're going to take that sick bastard down, and you're either with us or against us. A tense silence stretched between them, heavy with unspoken history and roiling emotions. Finally, Lorraine's shoulders sagged in defeat. You always did have a way of cutting through the bullshit, Nina, she sighed, suddenly looking every one of her fifty-three years. I suppose I can't keep denying it any longer. Gesturing for us to follow, she led the way inside, her measured steps echoing hollowly through the cavernous foyer. My gaze swept over the opulent trappings, gilded mirrors, priceless antiques, and not a single personal touch to be seen, like a museum frozen in time, devoid of warmth or life. How fitting for the Carson family. Lorraine ushered us into a dimly lit study, the heavy drapes drawn against the dying sun outside. A glass of amber liquid sat untouched on the mahogany desk, a telltale sign of its occupant's recent presence. At our entrance, Terence rose from the worn leather armchair, his expression thunderous. "'What is the meaning of this intrusion?' he growled, his eyes flicking between Nina and me with undisguised contempt. "'I don't recall inviting you piranhas into my home.' "'Can it, Terence?' Lorraine said, her voice low but laced with a surprising venom. "'We're done with your lies, your deceptions. It's time we settled this, once and for all. For a fraction of a second, a flicker of unease passed over Terence's craggy features. There and gone so quickly, I wondered if I'd imagined it. Just as swiftly, the mask of arrogance slammed back into place, his lips curling into a contemptuous sneer. So the family betrayers have come to rally against me, have they? He shook his head with a mocking chuckle. You're welcome to try, but you'll find I'm not so easily cowed. We'll see about that, I bit out, barely containing my fury. We know what you did to Eliza, you twisted son of a bitch, keeping a child locked up like an animal for your own sick gratification? That's a new low, even for you. His gaze locked with mine, cold and unflinching. You have no idea what you're talking about, girl. Everything I've done, everything, has been for the preservation and protection of this family's legacy. Terence's words hung in the air like a noxious cloud, his twisted justification chilling me to the core. Before I could formulate a response, Nina stepped forward, her eyes blazing with barely contained rage. That's enough of your rationalizations, you sick fuck, she spat. We're done playing by your rules. Eliza is safe, the jig is up, and you're going to pay for what you've done. A muscle twitched in Terence's jaw, the first crack in his impassive facade. You ungrateful little bitch, he snarled, his voice low and menacing. After everything I've sacrificed for this family, this is how you repay me? Sacrificed? Nina let out a harsh bark of laughter. Is that what you call systematically destroying us from the inside out? Alienating mom? Driving me away with your toxic vitriol? Wake up, you delusional bastard. The only thing you've ever cared about is maintaining your twisted power trip. I could see the fury building in Terence like a raging inferno, his body practically vibrating with the effort of restraining it. When he spoke again, his tone was soft, almost gentle. Nina, you have no idea the things I've had to do to preserve our legacy, the sacrifices, the difficult choices. His gaze bored into her, sharp as flint. You think I wanted to do what I did to Eliza, that I took pleasure in it? The air left my lungs in a shocked rush. Terence's admission hung there, visceral and horrifying. Nina looked equally sickened, her, her skin taking on an ashen pallor. You, you monster, she choked out. How could you? How could I? Terence roared, the floodgates finally bursting open. That sniveling brat was a liability, a blight on our family's good name. She had to be dealt with, made to disappear for the greater good. My hands curled into white-knuckled fists at my sides as a wave of revulsion crashed over me. This man's depravity knew no bounds, not even when it came to his own flesh and blood. So you admit it, I bit out through gritted teeth. You're the one who made Eliza disappear, then kept her locked up like a prisoner all these years. A cruel smile twisted Terence's lips. Give the girl a prize. Yes, I orchestrated the whole thing. The boating accident, the fake investigation, all of it. And you want to know the real kicker? He leaned forward, his eyes glittering with perverse glee. Her own sniveling parents were in on it from the start. A startled gasp from Lorraine was the only sound in the deafening silence that followed. Nina looked utterly shell-shocked, her mouth working soundlessly as she struggled to process her father's horrific revelation.
It was Marcus who finally broke the stillness, his voice hard as tempered steel. That's more than enough confession. With a deft movement, he had his sidearm leveled squarely at Terence's chest, his expression utterly devoid of mercy. Terence Carson, you're under arrest for the kidnapping, unlawful imprisonment, and endangerment of a minor. You have the right to remain silent. As Marcus recited the Miranda rites, cuffing the now ranting Terence with practiced efficiency, I caught Nina's eye across the room. The anguish and betrayal etched on her features said it all, the last thread of family loyalty severed for good. No matter what came next, there would be no coming back from this day. Terence's web of lies and manipulation had finally been laid bare, the depth of his evil exposed for all to see. My path was clear now, forged in the fires of this hard-won truth. By whatever means necessary, I would ensure Terence faced the full weight of justice for his unspeakable crimes. If it was the last thing I did, he would pay. The courthouse was a madhouse, swarming with reporters and gawkers, desperate for a glimpse of the sordid drama about to unfold. I pushed my way through the throngs, Eliza's small hand clutched tightly in mine as we forged a path towards the imposing oak doors. Just keep your head down, I murmured, shielding her from the flashing cameras and shouted questions. It'll be over soon. She gave a tiny nod, her jaw set in a determined line far beyond her years. Despite her diminutive stature, she carried herself with a quiet strength that never failed to fill me with awe and a fierce protectiveness. No matter what, I would ensure Terence Carson paid for what he'd done to this remarkable girl. The courtroom itself was mercifully hushed, the air thick with tension as we filed in alongside the prosecution. My gaze immediately found Terence, seated ramrod straight at the defendant's table, his expression one of haughty disdain. Our eyes locked for a brief moment, a silent challenge passing between us. A cruel smirk curved his thin lips, sending an icy shiver down my spine. That twisted son of a bitch was up to something. I could feel it in my bones. As the proceedings got underway, I found my attention divided between the testimonies and Terence's every-minute shift and reaction. He remained infuriatingly inscrutable, betraying none of the turmoil that must have been roiling beneath that impeccably composed façade. It wasn't until Eliza was called to the stand that the first hairline fractures began to show. She was so small up there, positively dwarfed by the imposing witness box. But when she lifted her head and fixed Terence with those haunted blue eyes, there was an unshakable resolve blazing within them that defied her fragile stature. "'Tell us, Miss Carson,' the prosecutor prompted gently. "'In your own words, what happened the night you disappeared six years ago?' A hushed stillness descended over the courtroom as Eliza drew a fortifying breath. When she spoke, her voice rang out clear and unwavering. It was my uncle, Terence. He took me from my parents' house late one night, told me we were going on a secret adventure. She recounted the harrowing tale in disturbing detail, the staged boating accident, the wrath hole in which she'd been imprisoned all these years, the mind games and emotional torment at Terence's hands. With every new revelation, I could see the cracks in Terence's composure deepening, his knuckles whitening around the arms of his chair. And he said I had to stay hidden, that no one could know I was alive, not even my own parents. Eliza's voice began to waver, but she pressed on with heart-rending bravery. He said it was, for the good of the family. By the time she finished, there wasn't a dry eye in the courtroom. Even the most hardened observers seemed shaken by the graphic injustice laid bare before them, all except Terence. As Eliza was finally excused, his booming voice rang out, shattering the somber silence like a thunderclap. You little lying bitch! Before anyone could react, he'd surged to his feet, teeth bared in an animalistic snarl as he lunged towards the witness stand, and Eliza. A collective gasp went up from the gallery, but I was already in motion— hurling myself bodily between the raging monster and his target. His hands found my throat, cutting off my airway with bruising force as we crashed backwards. Black spots danced across my vision, but I clawed desperately at his vice-like grip, a primal surge of adrenaline propelling me. Not this time, you bastard. Not her. Not my family. Distantly, I was aware of pandemonium erupting around us, shouting, scuffling the distant wail of sirens, but all that existed in that moment was the furious pounding of my heart, the burning need for air, 
and Terence's pitiless face looming over me twisted in a sadistic leer of triumph. Then, as suddenly as it had begun, the pressure was gone. I sucked in a ragged gasp, blinking against the dark blot still obscuring my sight. When my vision finally cleared, I saw Terence being swarmed by a sea of bodies, dragging his thrashing form away as he spewed vile curses and threats. Marcus was there, features set in a mask of cold fury as he slapped the cuffs back on the raving man's wrists. And in the eye of the storm's aftermath stood Eliza, gazing at me with those wise, haunted eyes, the eyes of one who had witnessed the true depths of human cruelty, yet emerged from the abyss unbowed. As our eyes met, a silent understanding passed between us. No matter what it took, we had won this day. Terence Carson's reign of terror was over. The rain fell in a soft drizzle, misting the air with a gentle haze as I made my way down the familiar dirt path. Overhead, the iron-gray clouds parted enough to allow a few feeble rays of sunlight to pierce through, bathing the Carson family cemetery in a somber glow. I'd been here too many times over the past year, first for Clayton's mother Lorraine's funeral after her untimely passing, then for the hearings and sentencing that finally saw Terence put behind bars for the rest of his natural life. Each visit had been more somber than the last. The weight of this place's history like a shroud draped over my shoulders. But not today. Today, I carried a renewed sense of purpose, a lift in my step that had been sorely missing for far too long. As I neared the secluded corner where the newest addition lay, a small figure came into view, sitting cross-legged before the simple granite headstone. There you are, I called out softly, unable to keep the faint smile from tugging at my lips. I was wondering where you'd gotten off to. Eliza turned, her face breaking into a warm smile that still managed to take my breath away after all this time. In the two years since her harrowing rescue and Terence's downfall, she'd blossomed from a haunted waif into a vibrant, healthy young woman, her eyes shining with a light I'd once feared was extinguished forever. Sorry, I just needed a moment, she replied, her gaze drifting back to the gravestone with a wistful expression. It still doesn't feel real sometimes, you know? After everything. I settled onto the damp grass beside her, draping an arm around her shoulders. She immediately leaned into my embrace with a contented sigh. I know it's been an incredible adjustment after what that monster put you through. I murmured, pressing a gentle kiss to the crown of her head. But you've handled it with more strength and grace than anyone could have hoped for, sweetheart. You're an inspiration to us all. A faint blush colored her cheeks at the praise, but her lips curved upwards in that radiant smile once more. I had a good role model, she said simply, reaching out to grasp my free hand in her slender fingers. If it wasn't for you, Evelyn, I might have never. Her voice trailed off but I could hear the unspoken meaning loud and clear. I gave her hand a reassuring squeeze, a silent promise that those nightmarish days were firmly in the past, now. Well, you'll never have to worry about that again, I assured her fiercely. Terence is gone for good, and the rest of us, we're going to be just fine. We lapsed into a comfortable silence, turning our attention back to the gravestone and the words etched into its timeless surface. In memory of Eliza Carson, beloved daughter, cousin, and friend, may you forever rest in peace. So much pain, so much heartache had stemmed from those five simple words, a tragic lie perpetrated by a deeply disturbed man blinded by his own greed and depravity. But in the end, it was a truth that had set Eliza free from her suffering, giving her a new lease on the life that had nearly been stolen away. A gentle breeze rustled the trees overhead, carrying the first hints of spring, of new beginnings and fresh starts. I watched contentedly as the wind tousled Eliza's golden tresses, her face tilted towards the pale sunlight filtering through the clouds like a flower unfurling its petals. There was still healing to be done, scars that may never fully fade. But in that moment, bathed in nature's delicate renewal, I felt a profound sense of peace and hope, our future. The nightmare was finally over it was time to awaken to the world anew. As Eliza and I rose, hand in hand, to make our way back home, I silently vowed that from this day forward we would embrace each moment with open hearts and minds. No longer shackled by the shadows of Terence's malice, we would bask in the warm glow of hard-won justice and dare to dream of what lay ahead. 
a new dawn was on the horizon, burning bright and radiant with possibilities, and we would greet it together, unafraid.